everybody. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Michigan Life Above the 45th Parallel. I'm Clarissa. And I'm Jason. And, and we're back like we never left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're getting out in the spot to get our shed actually it's built today. shed build day. Oh my goodness. We're actually there. Uh, we are supposed to get rain last night, and it, like, I woke up to a little bit of rain, but it's, like, dry out here, so we must have not got what we thought we were going to get. I thought we were going to wake up this morning and have a wet pad, and it was supposed to rain all morning. But it's not. But it's not. It's so, Michigan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, good for us, because we got a, darn bugs already, we got a dry pad, and we're up early, so I think we have enough time today to get everything out, get a shed built. Before we leave tonight. And get packed up before we leave, so. If the weather cooperates today, which I think it will, we should be able to be good to go on that. And yeah. I'm excited to actually get this built so that we can start moving forward with other things. Yes. It's been a little bit of a process, but we want to do things right. Wanted to make sure we had a good concrete pad. Mm -hmm. That took a little bit of time to get done. And uh, I think it turned out well. I think we had a good base going on. So mm -hmm. let's, uh, hopefully the shed goes smooth today and we get it done. Yep. All right, so tag along and let's see well, how let's, a shed is built. Well, let's get it going. I got most of the tools I think I'll need for the project. Get this stuff done and come back and wrap the shed. Looks like that's where you're stopping. 
I think they don't want to stay on there. They're not big, small enough to lay across, so you have to stand them up, and they just did not. I probably could have got a strap out, but I don't even know if I have any up here because I didn't bring my truck this weekend. We drove her car. So we didn't need to haul anything, so I'm like, oh, I'll save the miles on my truck because my truck's racking up the miles doing all these trips over the years, so. And I have no strap, so this had to suffice. It barely made it. <laughs> all right. What do you think it was? I just heard, like, the heavy breathing. Yeah, that's the dog breath Yep, he's just tearing through here. <laughs> Must be. So today we're going to be building a patio well metal shed. It's uh, 8 by 12. Uh, we picked this up offline. We got a pretty good deal on it. So today we're going to show you how to build a patio well shed. Step one is create some sort of foundation or a base for your shed to go on. Here in Michigan where we're at, I decided to go with a concrete foundation so that I can secure my shed to the foundation. Uh, try and keep some of that moisture from wicking up out of the ground because we get a lot of snow and rain up here So we chose to go with the foundation uh, Concrete and we've done that the past couple weekends. That's all set up dry ready to go So now it's time to build the shed. We'll so move on to the next step, which will be unboxing the shed Get a little tool pouch with your shed birches for the build. That's kind of neat. Some screws and stuff in there. A little belt buckle. All right, so I opened this box first. It's box three of three, but I, uh, but I kind of figured this one was the tracks and probably my base. Uh, I got a little parts list here. Looks like they're all labeled with numbers. That makes it a little easy. Okay, so I just saw these wall channels. Alright. comes with a step-by-step -step guide in English. It's nice. Alright, so we'll need that. Here's our parts list for this box. Looks like you get some cool green gloves to wear and a tool belt. Kind of cool. Alright, just stating that some of the corners might get bent in shipping. If you can, just wear your gloves like this one. We'll flatten it out. And it comes covered in plastic, so you have to peel all the plastic off each panel. So these look like the walls and doors, probably. Time to read the instructions. Box this one back up till we're ready for the walls. Just need to get those instructions out.
up one, start working on your track for your base. So I got my back wall done. That one's my front wall. All your pieces are labeled. All the steps are labeled. Each step tells you what pieces to use. Uh, you just gotta open up all your boxes, get your hardware out, which is your F1 screws for this step, and then get your track pieces out. So you have to kinda unbox all the boxes to get all your things. But let's work on the sidewalls now. track pieces they overlay and your holes line up I noticed if you lay them the wrong way your holes won't both line up properly but they should overlay makes it kind of simple I'm just following step by step in the guide so far seems to be pretty good let's hop over to the other side So we got our track laid out, followed the instructions, got our screws in, everything lined up pretty good. Uh, this one corner I had to manipulate the metal a little bit, you know, it might get a little mushed in shipping, so they state that in the instructions. Might have to bend some corners and straighten out a little bit, which we did here. We're good. Now I want to get my track square on my pad where I want it. And then uh, the next step is putting up walls per instructions, but I want to secure my track to my concrete pad. So that'll be our next step. Oh, we'll get this square and get it secured down. Alright, so next up after you have the track built, we now have to figure out where on your pad you're going to secure your track to. Uh, some of you might build your base or your floor exact size, so no worries, you just line it up. I'm leaving a 4 inch reveal on my back side leaving a little more space up front where the door's at uh, so you have a little step when you come in and then I'm going nine and a half inches on each side uh, from the inside of the track so I'm going to start in one corner I'm going to use tap cons I'm using concrete uh, screws so I'm going to pre-drill a hole I'm going to hit this corner first and then I'm going to pull measurements I'm four inches and nine and a half so then I'm going to work my way down drilling a hole making sure I'm nine and a half off the edge so my walls are nice and square and then I'll just make sure I'm four inches off the whole way down here. And I'll go every couple of feet, drill a hole, measure, secure it, and then just work your way around. And then that should keep you nice and square. So let's get going on our first anchor. Stuff a little nut driver.
All right, so got our first Tapcon down here. I changed my measurements. I want three inches back. Uh, I bumped it back a little bit to give me a little more extra room up there. So we got our first one in. I'll probably go down, square up that corner, make sure I'm three and nine and a half, and then I'll come to my center and I'll pull this in and straighten that out a little bit. So let's go down to this corner and get it squared up and do the next one. to that end pull it over nine and a half so that corner is over and then we'll pull our center and drill that and we'll just work one side at a time We decided to anchor our track to the foundation of our shed. Uh, there's many different options. This is the one we went with. So now that we have our track down, we can move on to the next steps, which I think is we're starting to put up some walls now. Uh, a few tips when you're drilling in the concrete, it's good to have some water, a uh, nice fresh drill bit, and let the drill do the work. Uh, you don't want to break your drill bit off, so you want to stay nice and straight up and down and square with your drill bit keeping the water in there so it helps lubricate the drill bit and it also cools it down. The cooler the drill bit stays, the longer it'll stay sharp. The hotter it gets, you'll just cook the teeth off of it and then it won't drill as, as good as intended. So uh, a few tips with that. And I was measuring as I was going, making sure everything was square. Like I'd square up my ends and then the center because they're two pieces screwed together would kinda wouldn't be 100% square. So I was measured in the center, pulling it square and then drilling my hole. If you just drill the hole where it sits, it's probably going to be unsquare. So you want to make sure everything looks nice and tight. Your door opens and closes good, so you want to make sure everything's always square. So I was just measuring the same distance in this corner. Should be the same distance in that corner. Should be the same distance in the middle. 
vice versa. When I poured my pad, I made sure I poured it nice and square, but I was pulling my measurements off and making sure I was the same distance off, which was keeping me square as well. So there's multiple ways I was keeping myself square. So that's just a tip, make sure everything is nice and straight and you don't have wonky walls because then it makes assembly a lot harder. All right, so final step. So for your first few corners, you're gonna be using the same screws you've been using, and then you add these little plastic washers. And then there's just four holes in the bottom. They have pre-drilled holes in the tracks, so everything lines right up. You just set it in place, screw in your four holes. So that's the next step complete. We put a wall section up. We had four F1 screws with four washers. Uh, the last rib locks into the corner piece. It overlays, and then all your holes line up. So pretty simple. Uh, do that four times, and then that step's complete. All right, so next we're building your top wall to connect the back wall. So you need your GS and your 10L and 10R tubes. This is like a support bracket in the middle. It's got holes pre-drilled, just lines up with the other ones. So does this one. So we'll screw on one side. Go started. Let's line up our other holes. Sometimes a good idea just to start them, just so everything lines up. If you tighten it down, they don't have a lot of adjustment. So you slide in a corner piece on each. Make sure you got your holes facing out because these will be the holes that will line up to screw the top of your panels in. So for that step, you're probably going to need a helper. Uh, I don't know how you're going to hold that up by yourself and line up the you holes. Build your bar in the center, put that center support in, screw those down. Make sure your holes are facing out and up so that this sits flush, everything lines up. Before you screw this in, there's a black corner piece. Like that. you got to put that in the corner. That helps support your corner. All right, so now we're building the front wall. Line up the side that has the two holes. In that step you're gonna need someone to help hold it up for you uh, I guess maybe if you had some quick clamps you could probably quick clamp them up there and hold one end and then go down to the other and square it up so I guess you could do it by yourself 
Uh, I don't have any clip clamps on me right now, so assistance was needed. We're going to pilot a little hole. Looks like they forgot to drill out a hole here. Easy fix if you have little holes. It looks like they just didn't punch them all the way through. They're half punch, so you can just push on them and it just kind of poked it right through. So that worked out well. Slide your piece in the center. Slide these under the track. You're gonna have to hold this right here. So on the last step, when we were putting under our back wall, make sure when you put your corner brackets in, they look like this. I had them in the opposite way, and this track for the sidewall wouldn't fit in because this wasn't oriented right. So I had to pull both my ends out. Those two were correct. My back two I had flipped, so you had to flip them around, and the skinny part goes up, wide part at the bottom when you're putting in your black corner pieces for the last step. Makes it easier. It won't The next step you won't be able to do if it's not sitting the right way. Now that you got all your corners up, you have all your wall top plate. So you have all your top plates on basically, and now we're just going to jam out a bunch of walls. Four screws at the top, four at the bottom. All your, all your holes are pre-drilled and lined up, so you just jam them out. So this step will take a little while, but you should have all the walls up after this step. Found this trick to be the best way to do it. Keep them in a sheet, stick it in there, and then they'll just rip off themselves after you screw it down pop right off it's easier than dealing with I don't I don't have the most nimble fingers so I found that's been the easiest for me sure you're overlapping them properly like that one I tucked under and over and then all the holes fell right into place I know that sometimes they'll line it up and when you don't get it to line up it, the holes won't line up so fronts we'll finish up each of our end walls these ones are like little half panels the WS3 panels two screws at the top and bottom we'll do one on each side of the door here this is your door opening I noticed this panel was sitting a little high, so I just backed off these screws so the bar would adjust up just a little bit and get everything to sit flush instead of it kicked up so high.
part of the wall you're gonna have a little space it's not gonna be a full panel there's two extra single pieces like we use in the front end uh, near the doors you're gonna use the other two one on each side to fill in your gap at the very end to finish off the wall <laughs> Includes all the walls. So now we have the foundations down, the base for the walls, walls are up, and your top plates are up. So I and I will say so far in the process, this has been the most tedious uh, in all the steps. It's been really simple, but it just takes a little bit of time uh, for the screws and the washers, kind of a little pain. I don't have the nimblest fingers, so. Uh, but just so far, I think anyone can do this. It's a pretty simple project. I pretty much used a screw gun with a Phillips head and the drill bits for the concrete, we're about the only two tools I use. So it's been uh, pretty easy, pretty simple so far, so. <laughs>